it's finally happened. We got the worm. We got the world's wide worm. The anthology's out. The update was today. Why I didn't have one a video release at 12, it'll release later tonight, which you'll obviously see. But World Spine Worm is finally here. I've been so excited. I played Creativity a while back, but we had to settle for the Torrential Gear Hulk version, which is like play Gear Hulk, cast uh, Magma Opus, and do that type of stuff. But World Spine Worm and Xenagos are finally here to play the one shot version, which is really nice. And this is the version, maybe not the exact deck list, but this is what we saw Reed Duke win the Pioneer Pro Tour with. Um, I think he was on. Did Zen and Ghost World Spine Worm version? I could be wrong about that. So please don't be too harsh in the comments if I am. But if you don't know how the combo works, pretty much we have all these things to keep us alive, interact with our opponent, and these key crucial things to kind of dig in our deck. Spite kind of fits in both categories, but we won't really worry about that. And we're a creativity plan. So we want to target our tokens because we have no other creatures in our deck or even treasures or artifacts and stuff. We have no artifacts or other creatures. The flip out Xenagos is one of the things. It has indestructible. It's not a creature if your devotion is high, but that's not why we really play it. We play it because it's the beginning of combat on our turn. Target creature gains haste, which is super important. And it gets XX equal to its power. So it gets an additional 15-15. So this will also flip out with Xenagos, and it is a Trampler. It is a 15-15. We can't really cast it. We can with Treasures, but like that's not the intent. If we have to grind it out, we will. But when this enters the battlefield, it's just a 15-15 normally, but then Xenagos gives it haste. It makes it a 30-30 one-shot cannon. Whenever it is put in the graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its library so we can get it to discard with big scores or other things like that. But also it's very important because of the fact that when it dies, we create three five five green worm creature tokens. So even if our opponent does have spot removal, let's say like a faithful absence or something like that, we actually do not get blown out that bad as we make three five five tokens with trample. And Xenagos will make one of them a 10-10. Um, we're just going to hop into the games. I hope you all enjoy them. Here is a quick glance at the sideboard if you would like to pause the video and look at that. But other than that, we're just going to get into the games. I hope you enjoy. All right, we get to go first. We have a solid hand. We have a one of negate. We have a fiery impulse to pick up any early threats. We're against aggro and a fable to follow up and a creativity, which just and screams that it's just great. Um, so we will actually play. River glide on the back side just in case we need to impulse something now. Try to reserve our life total if available. Looks like we're probably playing against Rakdos. Then we have a turn to play Steam Vents tapped. If we have our negate, we really only want to pick up. We really only want our negate to pick up a uh, fable here. If they tap out and they play their fable, and then I just get the creativity and slam them. I think. Because we make a token. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll play a fable. The cool thought sees sleeves. I like these a lot. I think it's thought sees. Maybe it's not. I actually don't think it's thought sees. What art is that? Unsure, but thought she's has a stylized art like that. Don't crush your that. Sure. Well, I mean, we figure we find out an answer anyway. Let's go ahead and offload this island. Draw another card. We get an impulse. We have the three red we need, so we'll just play this on the island side. The only thing we really need to dodge here is a thought seize. There's a fable from them. I don't care too much for this, I think. Yeah, I think it's fine. We could have Fatal Push available, which puts us in a tough spot. We could bend and then the gate, or do we bend the impulse? Maybe it's the impulse we're supposed to get rid of. 
I did this big score way too early. I don't know why I did it then. I could have just lost to a thought seize. Okay. This flipped and I had no stop. Arena at its finest, kind of giving us info. I mean, we're going to try either way. Why didn't I target both treasures? I had five mana. I punted and I'm... My brain was telling me that this was four mana and I needed six to do this because like to cast it is four. So I needed six to make two targets. I don't know why, but hopefully we tighten up play. Look at that's Our opponent gets to go first. We have a spell here so we can kind of limp into big score of creativity and a shark typhoon. So sure. A little part of me tells me that Spell Pierce is not going to be good, but we can play towards it either way. The Blood Tide Harvester here. I mean, we'll we'll Spell Pierce that. Make them wonder what our hand is. Wait, Spell Pierce actually ends up paying off here. Definitely. Definitely exhaust it over exhaust some other stuff. Going from here. They get the thoughts uses. They're definitely taking our creativity. Mayhem devil. Okay. Um. I just cycle this for nothing. Yeah, I think so. I know it's a little bit weird to do it with the Mayhem Devil in the stack, but their turn's pretty much over, so I'm just doing it. I like that draw. I think it's pretty good for us. We have one spell in there. So Impulse is still a bit of ways. Mayhem Devil is going to be quite the problem, so your creativity is going to have to be able to target our treasures. There's an oven, no cat. Lucky win, this is good, however. Now they have a source to kind of put into the oven. Might even go for it to try to find a cat. Although, if they were to do this and play a cat, I can then spike field hazard to cat and exile it, so. Take three. Fire off this impulse. We do have to play around Fatal Push. Another big score here. We have the lands that we want so i think a big score is just good to just keep digging or making more treasures for us to value here later um my turn find another red source here our creativity is online we'll be able to do it for two next turn and just do the combo the oven sacrifices as a Basically, it doesn't say an additional cost, but it's pretty much an additional cost. So there will be no time to target the witness if they want to stack the oven to it. Although deadly speed is pretty solid for them there. Uh, that all re can resolve. Need to dodge a thought seize, pretty much. And they just drew four cards. So it's not a very easy dodge. But another oven, so be it. We dodge thought sees gonna be pretty hard for us to lose here. Uh sure. Have a couple of cycles though. The one hard thing about when you play against the cat oven deck is uh it's very hard to kind of keep up with like the cat on the fact that you can't generally attack through it. A lot of times you kinda get shoulder checked by it. So it becomes a little bit hard to manage. That all resolves. They 
keep gaining life, so we might actually end up just losing in general. Or no, I guess double strike. We hit for 30. We're we're fine. Um Sure. They have a little bit more damage here. Uh we'll discard a spike field hazard. Again, we'll be targeting both our treasures, so we'll be fine. Find more lands. Find the third Mirax. We saw another one with the impulse, so we put on bottom earlier. Uh, we will impulse for two. Not five. Uh, target number one, target number two. Let these come in. Here to combat. This will get an XX in haste where it's its power. So it's a 30 30, and we'll attack. And take the hand. So you can see that they're kind of doing the traditional play. This has trample, so it doesn't matter. But normally you would see. Ghost proved the point. Normally you see the cat jump in front of the worm. Although, I was thinking maybe they had a way, like. A Liliana's triumph or something to make me sack it but still find a way through one of the better parts about playing against the deck that's not going to play counter spells and we saw the importance of spell piercing the thought sees early so keeping that up was actually really important for us go first we have a fable we don't have a fire left this time around but that's fine we'll lead off with the steam vents and play a canal after Especially if we're finding ourselves against some aggro here. Blue white. Uh, this is convoke, right? Pretty sure this is convoke. So we have to be careful. This is the only deck I can think of that plays inspector. It could just be humans. And I guess. This is a world where it's control. And we'll make him answer a fable. Make the spirit. No? Okay. I mean, the Spire Bluff and this Hollow Fountain kind of just scream convoked me. I'm pretty sure that's what we're playing against. But. And the fable. Uh, I'll discard a make this appear and a spike field hazard here. Uh, feel pretty safe for the next coming turns. We'll attack here. Let that attack through. So now we can big score and then cast and make this appear. They do something kind of ludicrous here. The lands go in their graveyard. We have Jeskai. Attack. Spells. That's that's a hard card for us to answer. So we definitely have to counter that because it'll cost us one more for each target we have. I mean, we're going to get room one of the big scores here. That resolves. We could have got blown out by a spell pierce. We'll do this. We'll attack here could have impulse and tried to go for it but i think establishing another fable and getting it ready makes more sense we have a chance to impulse and maybe find a counter spell we're also within range by the way
We'll let that go, I think. Blue here, they could have saved this to try to interact with us. They shocked this turn. So I'm a little unsure. Not sure why. They have four mana, maybe they're trying to big score. They have Hinata. Trying to pass their turn, but I have a floating mana. Yeah, we're gonna cast a big score here. We'll get blown out if it happens. Sure. Impulse can dig deeper, so we'll keep it. Well, we need a volcanic spite to answer this. Who knows? Maybe they'll trade it. Yeah, they let it come through. We hit. And of course, we'll pick up a spite here. And we'll decline. We'd rather cycle this instead. We're in danger. Feel great. Well, we can pick up this shark typhoon and make a one one to block gold span dragon, I suppose. attack here not to do what we have to do here it's unblocked block now a little bit nervous to have five mana open so don't blame him there see it will happen cycle for uh three i don't know why being weird i'll just press my command in a single spot removal for the most part we can definitely still get blown out here. We draw it in and land. Get to chump here, and then we chump here. Because if we take that hit, we're dead to two Prismari commands. Yeah. Here comes a Fable. They'll make it 2 2.
Withdrawals have been pretty normal though. Can't be too upset about it, honestly. Happens a lot. They deal two damage to us, but it's dead. Gains indestructible. We can still block it, so it's fine. Although they have extra digs here. They don't do anything, so kind of screams to me that they have it covered. Or just like an extra turn spell or anything here. I kind of hold both these back here. I gotta try to win the game. Part two, do you have it? They have no cards in hand, so they have no reason to put it back. Oh my lord, we actually got it. Why did they not cycle with the fable? I... I mean, I'll take it, I guess. Alright, I get to go first. I have a negate, which isn't one of in the deck. So it might just become a dead card in our hand, but it could potentially provide some value. We have fiery impulses that could pick up some stuff and a creativity, so. Normally, normally I feel like we're keeping a lot of hands if they just have creativity in it and trying to work from there. All right, negate might become valuable with the hollowed fountain play. There's a couple of options that this could be. This could just be straight up blue white, or this could be the Lotus Field version. You know, I'm not gonna interact with that. We just have to get to the point and maybe hold, be a little bit greedy with this negate and hold on to it. Amir X is also going to help us push this advantage if we can. If they tap out, we're slamming a big score. Uh, in which they do. Sort of. Most likely, they're not going to be playing Spell Pierce, so. If they are, I'll, I'll get blown out by Spell Pierce. But most blue-white lists will not play it. But generally... Most times, whenever you can kind of stick a creativity like that, you will. And now, now it's just a value game. I made the comment earlier, by the way, that this needed four cards. It only needs two. Um. So. So the discontinuity, right? So if you don't know this combo, they play a Lotus Field, they play Discontinuity, it ends their turn immediately, and they'll have a Deserted Beach available. Again, I'm cool. I'm pretty positive this list does not play Spell Pierce. So, I mean. I'm going to do this. And I'm just going to kill him. Um, I do want to talk about what they're playing. I think it's what I want to play next in Explorer. So if you don't know what they're doing, it's been a pretty common thing in Pioneer for a little while now. Um, please don't pass. So they play Lotus Field, but they play cards like, uh, Discontinuity Exiles and stuff. They play cards like this, which cost two blue and two less on your turn, so you don't have to spend two mana. And their goal is to generally play it on turn two, is when they want to play it, or turn three. And do it and then they can generally like next turn play a big to fairy and then play like the lotus field and like untap it with a big to fairy and stuff like that but they also play things like strict proctor that will stop the etb from happening from lotus field so it'll just be a three mana land drop that you can make so they do that they play discontinuity and then there's one other effect they play that's really good and i like this deck a lot but the only thing to note 
is this deck is not on a lot of counter spells. They are more of a board state presence deck in terms of playing things like Supreme Verdict and other things like that. So if you see Lotus Field and you have a chance to potentially barrel it and like fire it off like we did there, um, obviously they only had one mana up, but still regardless, they're going to be more of a board wipe deck and spot creature removal. So if you have the chance to play it, just slam it and do it. All right, post game wrap up. Um, it's finally here. I'm so happy. Um, we generally been stuck to playing Creativity Gear Hulk or Creativity Atraxa, which has been like the popular version now. Um, but I personally like I like things like a uh, Valakut Molten Pinnacle, where you cast Escape Shift and then you shoot them for like 18 with the land. If you don't know what it is, it's a modern deck. Um, was very dominant in the past, a little bit lackluster now. But I kind of like decks that have like an I win the game button. But we saw this deck do multiple things. We won on the spot when we were about to lose. We saw the blue white Lotus Field list trying to play Lotus Fields and do that type of shenanigans. But we actually blew them out instead um, with the creativity bringing out our worm and just one shotting them against Mayhem Devil. We got to punish that deck. They weren't able to kill us in time. We also won in like the weird fair way. I'm not entirely sure how they had three cards and they didn't pitch anything to a fable. And we were able, they attacked out with the Goldspan Dragon. They didn't have like the extra turn or like ways to untap Goldspan and take an extra turn, which is what I've seen a lot of people doing with Goldspan Dragon specifically. Um, other than that, we kind of just like, when we had it with the big sword we kind of just bullied those games um other than that we kind of fell behind a little in some spots like one we flooded a little bit but that happens we're playing 24 lands it's very easy to happen but we're also playing three copies of spike field hazards which normally is just to be lands or pick up mana dorks like against mono green things like that but the one of spell pierce actually came in clutch i think twice today two times um, maybe not, but it definitely stopped the thought season, allowed us to win that game. Impulses are solid. If you haven't played with Impulse, it has Spell Mastery for two. It hits for three instead, which can pick up things like a Mayhem Devil or other three drops that are pretty important to pick up. Also, two of these can pick up a Shieldred. Not the best value in the world, but like a way to answer that card in general or the Impulse and a Fight can also pick it up if you're running into Rakdos a lot. Impulse is a nice, it's probably the best two mana look at the top four cards that we have. This is one of the reasons that we play it. Make Disappear finds itself in a good spot. We trim one Make Disappear to fit in a copy of Negate, just a harder counter spell if it goes late and we're trying to protect our creativity. For example, if that was traditional blue white, we would have waited a little bit longer. We could fire off the creativity and protect it with the Negate that we had in our hand. Uh, Fables, because Fables messed up, it's not legal and 18 different formats as you can see and there's a reason for that because of the amount of value that it provides for creativities um this is the key card of the deck destroy target artifacts or creatures big note there you can actually target your opponent's stuff with it as well so if you are playing against like the rakdos decks and they have a shielder that you just can't answer you can actually target it with the creativity and it'll blow it up it could technically flip out another one but you just roll the dice on the odds to answer any other creature it hits besides another copy of Shieldred. Or like a pesky artifact that you need to pick up off the board. Um, big score. The main reason we were even able to do this pretty much most of the time. If you cast this on four and have a land drop with the creativity. You target both your treasures and it generally pulls out these two to win the game. A memory to lose in here is actually supposed to be dig through time but somehow... It must be hard to program or something. They have not given it to us um, in the new anthology, which is why we're able to play this deck to begin with. However, I'm a little upset that we also didn't get Hidden Strings to make Lotus Field a deck. Like, you gave us everything else. Why not give us Hidden Strings? Like, we have everything else. If you want the format to match. Unless that's their new master set, and that's, like, the way they're going to sell it, I guess. I don't know. A one of Shark Typhoon. This is in the deck. Um, other than that, we have... Then a ghost god of revels if you weren't able to kind of see it or i didn't explain it throughout the video as long as your devotion red and green is less than seven that's not the relevant part at the beginning of combat on your turn another target creature gains haste and xx until end of turn where x that creature's power world spine worm to 15 15 becomes a 30 30 
and it also we don't get blown out if they make a sacrifice this or something because when it dies we create three five five worm creature tokens with example so if we're able to attack and maybe they kill it with something wandering Ipper is something we do have to kind of watch out for because it can exile with that and then we are dead in the water if we can't win the fairway but however pretty cool i like it a lot it's a big i win the game button and it's really enjoyable to play on my end however we do have one more key thing to talk about and that's the murex this land has been a huge pickup for this deck we're able to make mites on our opponent's turn and it it kind of serves as like a two-purpose plan murex can help us win the control matchups where they're just going to hold counter spells for creativity they know what we're on so we just make a ton of murexes and their life total is 10 permanently because these have not infect but they have toxic so we're allowed to grind out those games and then force them to make unoptimal plays or plays they don't want to make that allow us to potentially jam our creativity into those spots and force them to interact and then let our mites take over and we play three of these that's the other big important thing of the deck we have a sideboard we didn't play best of three i'm thinking about playing more best of three to begin with so i might actually end up doing that but we have the three rendering volleys to pick up any white or blue creature. A lot of times this picks up planeswalkers as well. Um, Aether Gust to answer mono green or red and things that are uncountable. We had that happen today. Thankful Stroke is another one kind of card to pick up some big stuff in the gate as an extra copy when they're good. Memory to Lose is supposed to be another copy of Dig Through Time, but we put the second probably best thing that we can here. Two Mystical Disputes. Two Anger the Gods, two Shark Typhoons, and two Hallbreaker Horrors when this combo is just not good. And we have to kind of go for the fair plan of just, hey, I'm going to play an uncounterable Flash creature that's a 7-8 and then makes you have a horrible time because our entire deck's instant speed spells. And it has enough toughness that we can do weird things like target it with a Spike Field Hazard. Like Spike Field Hazard or our own Hallbreaker Horror in order to make you put a spell back in your hand. So there's a lot of like little neat tricks and stuff like that we can do. So I hope you all enjoyed. I'm very excited that some of these cards have actually come to Arena, like World Twine Worm and Xenagos, the big two pickups that I personally enjoy. Um, but we'll see you around in the next one, I suppose. Thanks for watching.